So you're an aggressive baseliner and you're looking for the best possible racket for your play style. But what even makes a racket good for aggressive baseliners anyway? Well, aggressive baseliners need three big things to get the most out of their games on court. So the first thing is great stability. This helps the racket really win that collision with the ball when you're trying to take command of the point by hitting the ball early and on the rise. You'll need as much torsional stability as possible without sacrificing too much new Vulnerability. This means a medium to high twist weight and swing weight. The second critical factor is a forgiving beam design. Stiffer and thicker beams will increase stability, reducing the twisting you feel on impact and increasing your power, control, and spin during off-center shots. The third and final critical factor is a predictable string bed. A slightly tighter string spacing really helps with consistent directional control off the string bed. This consistent predictable response provides the directional control required to take the ball on the rise with accuracy, letting you change direction with power and confidence. So these are the absolute best rackets for aggressive baseliners that you can buy today. So here's the structure of this video. I'm gonna break it down by level. And since I don't really think players are adequately equipped to develop a unique play style until they hit the level about NTRP 3.5 or UTR three to five ish. That's where we're going to start. One, another thing to note that if a racket is mentioned in a lower level, its relevance remains as we go up the list. Think of this more as a progression scale, like in a video game, as you progress and advance as a player, yes, you do unlock more potential options, but that doesn't mean you can't just upgrade your starter racket into an end game weapon. So starting off with the intermediate rackets, my honorable mention here, is the Yonex Izum 100. And I think the absolute best choice is the Head Radical MP. The Oxetic Radical MP features a surprisingly dense 16 by 19 string pattern, which offers supreme directional control. And even though it is a 16 by 19, I found the weight distribution to work best for flatter hitters with more linear straight through strokes. I think this racket is more than maneuverable enough for one-handed backhands, yet it remains more than stable enough, even in its light stock 300 gram form, to use as a deadly weapon on returns. The Radical MP absolutely loves taking balls on the rise and redirecting pace. The feel is very connected and very responsive. That said, the dwell time is pretty short and the sound off the string bed is pretty high pitched. So if that irritates you, you're not gonna like this racket at all. Overall, the Radical MP is a phenomenal platform racket that takes weight very well in all areas. The downsides are that spin potential is on the weaker side. Dwell time is so short, it feels like the racket has left the string bed before you've had time to brush up the back of the ball. This can be alleviated by stringing looser and choosing a shaped poly to get more ball bite. Moving on to experienced players, which I'm calling about 4.0 or UTR 5 plus. Here, my honorable mention is Bablet Pure Arrow 98. The VS will also be okay, but my number one choice is the Wilson Pro Staff X. The Pro Staff X is surprisingly easy to use for a 315 gram racket. It carries its weight extremely well, not being bogged down by poor maneuverability. Instead, the Pro Staff X makes great use of every gram, boasting surprisingly solid feel and offering tremendous torsional stability from that extra weight. Compared to the Radical MP, the X provides a much plusher response and a more solid feel. Spin potential from that 16 by 19 pattern is also very strong. The Pro Staff X is a very good option, especially if you're an aggressive baseline player who sometimes struggles with getting that consistent weight transfer through your shot, as you can kind of trust the extra weight from your racket to pull you into the court after you hit your shot. Those with one-handed backhands are likely to prefer the superior maneuverability and plow through of the 97 
However, I think for most players in that 4.0 region, the added forgiveness that you get with the X in that 100 score inch package is a worthy trade-off. And I do think the X is a little bit more well-rounded as a racket on the whole when compared to the Radical MP, but it does lack a little bit of control when you do compare it to the Radical MP. I think this could be alleviated by going with a slightly higher string tension, maybe like 5% higher than your usual, or going with a thicker, rounder string compared to whatever you normally use. Moving on to advanced players which i'm calling about a 4.5 higher or a utr 7 and above here my honorable mention is going to be that pure strike in the 18 by 20 pattern but i think the best choice here is going to be the technofiber t fight iso 305. Now, even though this is a lighter option when compared to the Pro Staff X, which we just talked about, what limits its appeal to lower levels is that huge 338 swing weight. This big swing weight really helps you plow through balls, even against the hardest of hitters. That 18 by 19 string bed is extremely consistent with a very low launch angle. This makes changing direction during the point very predictable and controllable. There's plenty of put away power available from that stiffer elliptical beam shape. That paired with that higher swing weight means that off-center shots barely lose any power or control, so it's really easy to stay on the gas at all times from all areas on the court. To me, the feel on contact is the main weak point of this racket. It feels a little bit stiffer than its RA would suggest, and I think the foam feeling makes things a little bit more muted for my taste. Another thing to note is that the grip shape is really rectangular. This is a preference thing, but I've kind of found that it works better if you've got like an eastern forehand grip or maybe a full western forehand grip, but it does irritate my semi-western grip, so it's not something that I was able to have like that much success with, but I think it's still a great racket. And if you are worried about that grip shape, but you really wanna try that racket, I recommend going down a grip size as then it gives you a little bit of room to play with to manipulate the shape of that grip. Now, if this video has been helpful for you so far, please give this video a like. I'd also really love to hear from you in the comments. I love when you guys leave hilarious jokes for me down there and I you do want to support this channel financially, which of course, no pressure. I know these are tough economic times for everyone. We do have affiliate links in the description if you want to try out some of my favorite tennis strings. And if you want one extra video per month, you can join our YouTube membership program. There are a couple of different levels to join depending on what you're willing to spend and what you want to get out. Last up, we've got our expert category or NTRP 5.0 and above or about UTR 9 plus. Now, I think for this one, my honorable mention has got to go to the racket that belongs to the GOAT. That is the heaviest stick you can buy, the RF 97 autograph. Second honorable mention is the head Pro Tour 2.0, that thing feels so solid, it's so hefty. But I think the best one out there for most players is the head gravity pro the head gravity pro is seen on tour in the hands of professional tennis players for a reason because it's a damn good racket ash barty won more than her fair share of actually probably not she deserved to win probably more especially if she stayed around while rublev and zverev are consistent threats in some of the biggest tournaments in the world. That wide 100 square inch head delivers a colossal hitting area. It makes it feel like you can just bash the shit out of any ball, any time you want. And that 18 by 20 pattern just keeps everything in check. It brings the power levels down, that launch angle down. And I think this is the most control oriented 100 square inch racket that you can buy. And honestly, its control rivals that of many 95 square inch options. And I think exceeds that of like the V-Core 95. It's also among the most solid feeling rackets available today. It has a very plush feel, great dwell time and very solid comfort. That said, maneuverability is not this racket's strength. You need to be one hell of a player to wield this beast and expert footwork is required to get into your hitting position in time. That said, the Gravity Pro is a pretty versatile frame. It can generate plenty of spin if you ask for it and slices knife 
through the court like butter. And even if you kind of suck like me, this one's honestly a pretty fun one to just keep in your bag if you want to just smack some balls around. So those are my absolute favorite rackets for aggressive bass liners. I'm sure all of you disagree with me. I want to know why in the comments and let me know if I should do the same kind of video for a different kind of play style. Like you want to know about spin? How about counter punching? Maybe serve and volley? You tell me. My service is for you. See you next time.